All right, practicing legato this week. I say at least 50% of the time, no distortion. This way you're really focusing on making those pull-offs done, for, done correctly, sound good. Um, using my Boss multi-effects processor and I'm having a hard time finding just a straight up clean channel. So this one's got like, I think a little bit of reverb on it, but it's not too much, so. Um, you yeah, know, when you're changing strings, and you're going to hit that next set of pull-offs, think of it like you're changing chords. So, you know, when we're like doing power chord stuff, we always get those fingers all down at the same time. So it's the same idea here. In fact, if we need to, one thing I have done with people before is you do some pull-offs. Going into a chord after those pull-offs to train the hand to get those fingers down. So anyway, um, yeah, working on this guy. Uh, yeah, Pinky will hit that switch there. And then, because we're not going anywhere else on that final note, that F sharp there, I'll just hit that with the ring finger. Seems like the uh, most logical choice. Uh, number two here. So this is about, let's see, no, there was something I noticed that we talked about. Right, right, okay. This is to help teach that, I'm going to say middle finger, although it's either the middle or the ring finger. It's to teach the notes or the, the middle note finger to stay put. So I've been doing the pull-offs and the triplet stuff. We mentioned uh, yesterday is sometimes that either the ring or the middle finger was starting to float while the pinky was down, even like both the index and pinky being down, sometimes these guys would want to do their own thing. So this is supposed to help keep that finger down better. So. too fast. Um, you know, I better just double check speed real quick. Let's see how, uh, pardon me, Let's see how 20 feels. And this might be a pain, in, too big of a pain in the butt. This is a, a, a riff or a lick that is not really designed for going crazy fast. It's designed to address that specific issue. So, I mean, that didn't feel too bad. It's kind of awkward. If I try it at 180, which is like, I guess we could say the shred standard. I don't know if I'll be able to pull it off without being warmed up into it. Ugh. <laughs> need to practice it. Um, yeah, and it's really because of that pinky bouncing around, I think. It makes it really challenging. So, take your time with it, get where you can, and let's see, finished that, and next was, yes, starting the six add nines. So, just like you were doing yesterday, you started with the sixth chord, and then you added the nine. Um, so, yeah, sometimes the fifth interval can be left out, but if you can include it, that would be a good idea. You may have to, like you did here with that D minor 6 add 9, instead of doing it in the open position, you moved up, so this way you had at least five strings to play with instead of the four. 
So that's something to keep in mind. When you have a four string chord, you may want to try manipulating a bar chord instead. Um, and yeah, if you feel stumped, like trying to do, man, create the new chord working down here, and it's just like, seems like it's not working, just try it somewhere else, see what you come up with. Take advantage of the open strings when needed, and yeah, let me know if any questions come up, and I'll see you again next week.